in the country, Duke University concludes a week of basketball that began in the great Northwest. Tonight, back on the East Coast, Duke plays Virginia. Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski, is off to one of the best starts in his nine years of coaching Duke. The Blue Devils, who've been in the Final Four twice in the last three years, have played ten games and won them all. Danny Ferry is one reason for Duke's number one ranking. Ferry leads the ACC in scoring, has been in double figures 44 consecutive times, and set an ACC record with 58 points against Miami earlier in the season. But Ferry has help, lots of help. Robert Bricky was a preseason all-ACC selection. Leads Duke in block shots, second in rebounding, while hitting 60% of his shots from the floor. Virginia coach Terry Holland is not having that kind of year. Surgery has sidelined Holland, and longtime assistant Dave Odom is in charge in Holland's absence. The Cavaliers, though, still have their scoring threat, Richard Morgan. This offensive-minded guard leads Virginia, and as always, leads the team in steals. But it is Bryant Stith, the new player on the block. Last year in high school, Stith averaged nearly 30 points a game. This year, he's a starter for Virginia, averaging 14 points a game, and gives the Cavaliers hope for the future, for Stith is part of the youth movement in Charlottesville, where there are only two seniors on the entire team. Tonight, number one Duke plays Virginia on ACC Basketball. Raycom Sports and Entertainment and J.P. Sports proudly present exclusive live coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball. Tonight, from University Hall in Charlottesville, the Virginia Cavaliers host the Duke Blue Devils. This game is brought to you by Budweiser, U.S. Air, Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, First Union National Bank, Buick, and by Pepsi. And welcome to University Hall, home of the Virginia Cavaliers, but it's been home to the Duke University Blue Devils, who've won here their last five times and overall have defeated Virginia the last 12 times they have played. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson, along with former ACC star Len Elmore. Basics, Danny Ferry, All-American 58 points against Miami, set an all-time record. Duke University unbeat number one in the country. Virginia coming off a losing season without its coach. Where do we go from here tonight? Well, it may look like a mismatch on paper, Jim, but we do have some underlying factors. We've got a tired team, quite possibly, in Duke. They played in Seattle on Tuesday, flew 3,000 miles to Durham to play Davidson on Thursday, and they're here tonight. On the other hand, we've got Virginia. They're opening their ACC contest right here. Um, we've got Terry Holland in the hospital, and we've got some young, enthusiastic players. They may want to win one for Terry, as well as prove themselves to the home crowd. Well, let us remember, Coach K wanted Duke to have a tired week to get ready for the ACC schedule ahead. Well, that's great scheduling, and, and Coach K has always had that type of, um, at, at least, four cents to, to be able to do something like that. All right, we'll come back with our Mazda game plan in a moment and to hear from both coaches, Coach K and Dave Oven. But from University Hall, we pause, and here is a word from Budweiser. The cars and trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPV. And Len, if I were going to have a game plan, I'm the University of Virginia, my game plan would be around how do I stop Danny Ferry? Well, that's absolutely true. However, Duke is not a one-man team. They've got to force some guys like Quinn Snyder and Robert Bricky to beat them from outside. You know, Coach K says even if they lose, they're on the right track. But he says he does have some concern, believe it or not, about the University of Virginia. We talked to Krzyzewski of Duke, and he said this is what concerns him about Virginia. Well, uh, the main concern is the fact that uh, they play so many people, and they're all good players. Uh, they rotate people in and out, and they're, they're a fresh team all the time. So you're not going to wear them down, and, and they might wear us down. So I'm concerned about that. And I, you have a response to that, I'm sure. Well, I'm going to agree with Mike Krzyzewski in that they'll see an awful lot of Virginia players coming out. Danny Ferry's going to draw an awful lot of the attention. But again, Danny Ferry is not a one-man team in this team. And again, Dave Odom is the man in charge as Terry Holland is out with surgery. And Dave Odom really did not expect anything different from Duke tonight. I don't think that they'll change one iota. I think they'll go with what uh, has been good to them over the years. Uh, they do have a very, very good man-to-man -man defense, and I think they maybe are a little bit more multiple uh, defensive-minded this year than they have been. They are doing a little more trapping and, and even some zone. 
Uh, and as far as their offense is concerned, I think they're probably the most unpredictable uh, team to defend in the league because they throw so many cross-court passes, and uh, as soon as a guy's open, they let him have it. And, of course, when you're playing against a guy like Danny Ferry, uh, you, you have a tendency to watch him play more than you really do guard him, and I think that's one reason that he scores and gets almost as many assists as any big man in the country. The Mazda game plan has been brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPV. University Hall is absolutely jammed, even though school is not in session. You're all here to see Virginia play Duke, the starting lineups, in a moment. University Hall, and let us meet those starting lineups. Let's go to PA announcer Charlie Smith. Welcome our Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions TV audience to University Hall for tonight's game. The Duke Blue Devils and the homestanding University of Virginia Cavaliers. Starting lineups for the visiting Duke Blue Devils at the forward positions, number 21, Robert Rickey. Number 35, Danny Ferry at forward. At center for the Blue Devils, Ala Abdul Nabi wearing number 30. At the guards, number three, Bill Henderson. And number 14, Quinn Snyder. And the coach of the Blue Devils, Mike Krzyzewski. For the University of Virginia Cavaliers. At forward, number 20, Bryant Smith. At the other forward for Virginia, number 30, Matt Slunda. Matchup, Leonard, who's going to card Danny Ferry and how well he will do. Well, it's my understanding, as, as spoken by some of the assistant coaches for Virginia, um, Matt Blunden is going to wind up starting out on Danny Ferry. And I guarantee you that Blunden's going to start, but he's going to have an awful lot of help because all the attention is going to be focused on Ferry. Brent Stab will jump against Ella Abdenabi. And Duke is in the dark uniforms, the blue of the Blue Devils. And it is controlled by the freshman Smith of Virginia. One and back foot by John Crotty, whose dad played at North Carolina. Crotty himself is only a sophomore. There is Stiff, the young hot shot freshman. Crotty is the ball handler. That's Blunder, the ex-quarterback, and a shot from the side. And that's by Richard Morgan doing what comes naturally. It's 2-0. Offense run very well there by the Cavaliers. Now Quinn Snyder there, very shallow in backcourt end. Danny Ferry may have to move the backcourt should there be foul trouble. From the side, Phil Henderson ties the game. Well, we can see right now that Virginia started out in a zone. Danny Ferry came up high, and um, I believe he was just there to survey, see what he's going to expect for the rest of the game. Stiff at the top of the key, Henderson on him. Stiff takes the shot, and in and out. Ball is tipped up, no good, and is still recovered and brought back up by Brent Dabbs, and he has double dribbling the ball, so it's a turnover, and goes to Duke. It's two all, and it's gone 59 seconds. Well, I think this is going to be one of those situations where you have the underdog out here. It's going to feel out to Duke. They're going to find out if they're going to play that tight defense or not. And there's the steal, and all the way in is Morgan, and it's 4-2. That's great anticipation from Richard Morgan. He's the lone senior on the starting team. He's the one that's got to exert the leadership out there. Great start. And he's the man that leads the team and has for years in steals. Danny Ferry from outside, and that's a three-pointer. And Ferry answers. It's 5-4 Duke. 
Stiff in underneath. Trying to go up and does not get it. Tipped away and Quinn Snyder comes down. Here comes Duke. Body back very quickly. Henderson turns around and Morgan fouls him. Now we're just speaking about a little bit of leadership. That time Richard Morgan sensing that uh, Phil Henderson had the easy shot inside. Had to go for the block. However, Phil Henderson beat Richard Morgan down court, and that's something that's going to hurt Duke. It will see Henderson down. Nice spinning move along the lane. Morgan had no other opportunity except to try and block the shot. Henderson, an 81% three ball shooter. And still 5-4. The one thing we have to notice, Jim, neither team is pulling punches. They're going right at the basket and attacking it. It is 7-4. Dabs in underneath, Barry knocks it away. Picked up by Crotty, who puts up a left hand and no good. London goes after it and is fouled. Virginia seems to be getting good position on the offensive board. What they're trying to do is spread the Duke defense out. What they hear you have Crotty getting the offensive rebound, laying it back up, but London's right inside. Great position on Danny Ferry. And that's what happens when you spread a good man-to-man -man defense out. The rest of the players who aren't on the ball are really cognizant of helping out. Consequently, when you know your teammate's going to take a shot, you can get great position. London is now 10 for 13 on the year. He was a high school All-American as a quarterback and as a backup quarterback on the University of Virginia squad, University of Virginia squad. 7-5 now the score. Whoops. Off the front of the rim. And pulled down by Bricky. Here's Ferry. Nice pass inside to Henderson. And is it a block or is it a charge? Agliotti says it is a block. On Dabs. Well, right now, recognizing that Richard Morgan is one of the major offensive threats for Virginia, uh, the Duke guards are now going to start taking it to the basket. Morgan is on that side of the zone. Bill Henderson comes down, and Morgan has got to be aware that he is there. Henderson now has five of the eight points, and that's the first free throw he's made. Six points, nine to five. Duke. The good brings the ball down the court. Crotty doesn't waste any time, and there's a another turnover as Dabs then has trouble with the dribble. Well, Brent Dabs shouldn't be out there handling the ball. Pete Crotty gave it to him as an outlet, took off and went underneath looking for a pick, maybe to free someone else up. Now that's 12 consecutive games here for five in, in University Hall, and Virginia's got to think about that. It's got to be in the back of their minds right now. Upper Lobby missed the shot. The ball goes out of bounds, inbounded by Dabs, and here comes Carter. Now, Jim, I'm going to look for Virginia to be a little more patient with the shooting, but obviously they're not looking for it. There's Crotty. And it's nine seven. Both teams are playing very opportunistic basketball. If they get the open shot, Ali and a foul by Crotty and a basket by Bricky. Now that's a prime example of opportunity here. We have Crotty low on the zone. Here, Quinn Snyder, with no pressure on him, sees Robert Bricky sneak behind the zone. John Crotty is no match for Robert Bricky on the alley-oop. Well, something to keep in mind also, as Crotty draws a foul, that is the fourth team foul. And that is good. Bricky, a 55% free throw shooter. Completes the three-point play, and it's 12-7. Body from the corner, nope. And there's a good leap by Smith, but is taken away by Abdullabi. And here's Ferry. The ball is Smith again. Knocked away again. Body with quick hand. Gets away from Henderson. Down to Smith. He's going to take the quick shot. No. And here comes Henderson. And he simply... Well, he runs over Crotty, but Crotty draws the foul. Well, let me tell you, this tempo is much too fast for Virginia, Jim. 
Richard Morgan with great anticipation makes the steal, comes down, takes a quick shot. And here, Henderson gets the rebound. Crotty is caught in between thoughts. He doesn't know whether he should retreat on defense or try and make the steal. Consequently, he's been caught. Well, seven, five-point lead, 16.45 to go. We're just in the early moments of a frantic first half in Charlottesville. No substitutions by either club yet. Good feeling out process by Duke. They keep bringing Danny Ferry at the top. He's the hub of their motion offense. He's got the good eyes for the passing. That was the feed and tennis for Aldenavi by Ferry, but intercepted by Virginia. Stitt is looking to shoot all the time, isn't he? Well, well Brian Stitt goes in high school. He's a super freshman. Great poise for a freshman. Ferry. Ferry now has five points. Virginia's got to move more, try and go back door, move people out of that area and clear it out. Look for some people inside. Oliver tried to force that shot down the inside, and it is good by Dabbs, and he is fouled. And as we mentioned before, once you spread the defense just a little bit, you can penetrate and find some open people because everyone's cognizant of help. Here, Oliver makes the penetration and dishes off. Pulls the defensive man towards him. Good look. Out of on Henderson, that's his first. And Dabbs, a 63% free throw shooter, goes to the line. It is 14-11, and Dabbs can make it 14-12. Right now, Daniel comes in, and Blunden goes out to Virginia. What I was going to say is right now we have a substitution that's obviously to uh, get on Danny Ferry. They're going to try to wear Danny Ferry down with assorted numbers of players out there. That misses the free throw, and it's used by three. Henderson driving the baseline. Whistle blows, and a turtle. 15-38 to go in the game. And they have called time. And the score, Duke 14, Virginia 11. <laughs> 14 to 11, 15, 38 to go. That's the score. And Duke has certainly been very terrific in the fact that they have four turnovers but are leading the ball game because when they shoot the ball it goes in they're shooting four for five at 80 percent Virginia's had 10 shots as Leta said they're rushing their shots many times and have made good on five of them it's 14 to 11. now let's see it is dabs again throwing the ball in to Anthony Oliver Duke has made a change. Christian Leitner has come in. And Quinn Martin has gone out. Oliver. A hole. Charged against Quinn Snyder. Well, if we look at the Duke defense right now, they've now started to pack it in just a bit. Rather than come out and extend and overplay people on the wing, they've decided to step back, force Virginia to shoot from the perimeter. Right now, it looks as though Richard Morgan is the only threat from more than 15 feet. Morgan had a great night here. Oh, I guess he was a freshman when they upset North Carolina. There's Oliver in backcourt. And there's Jeff Daniel who came in before the last timeout. Morgan, their scoring threat. Good fake there. Let's see what happens. He does. And Morgan can be a street shooter if he gets it going here. Now underneath, whistle blows. Those team fouls continue to mount up. This will again be on Dad. That's his second. And that's the fifth team foul. The Duke's motion offense can get some big guys tangled up underneath and setting picks and trying to get around it. And now Dad goes out. And Curtis Williams, number 21, is coming for Virginia. Ferry from the side, yes. Ferry now has seven points, and it's 16-13. And Jim, I'm just amazed that Virginia continues to allow one man to guard Danny Ferry. He pops out uncontested. 
Barry knocks the ball out of the hands and tried to get the call. Knocked it out of the hands of Jeff Daniels. Tried to get the call, but the official says it still belongs to the Jimmy. Morgan to throw it in. And it is the freshman Anthony Oliver running things from backcourt. Crotty, who is rushing things, has taken a seat. Virginia running good patterns right here, getting the good shot inside, five feet away, but missing. Along the baseline, and it's made a mistake as Stiff, the freshman, steps on the baseline, trying to force his way under the basket. But you can't fault that enthusiasm. Stiff, again, got good rebounding position. Unfortunately, he's a little too close to the line. That's what Virginia has to do. If they're misfiring on offense, they've got to continue to crash the boards. Duke is vulnerable to that when they spread their defense. Roddy has come back in, and John Smith, a great sixth man for Duke, number 33, has come in for Duke. And Henderson is on the bench. Let's get to the ball there. 14 minutes, 10 seconds to go, first half. Underneath, Meichner, who just came in, and that's where he got a wonderful uh, points the other night. With just lean-ins and dropping them in. He is 6'10", one of the many big men that Blue Devils have. He's 5'5". Well, that shows Duke's versatility. Here they have three front-line players out here playing people outside on the perimeter, particularly Barry and Smith. There's Stiff. Stiff. Rock. Well there. And now taken back by Crowley. And from the side, Morgan has his shot blocked, but there's a foul called against Christian Lakeman. That was great athletic ability demonstrated by Robert Bricky. The play goes by, and Bricky has the quickness and the sense of pre and the presence of mind to retreat and still make the block inside. Team fouls on each team now. Virginia. Now a lot of players, a lot of players for Virginia oh, seeing yeah. some action. This is uh Mike Chef Steve predicted. They're coming in in waves. Any turners come in. Bill Batts has come in, 34. That's Crotty. And from the corner, that shot is good by Morgan. He now has eight points. That's a two-point lead for Duke. That was a rainbow by Richard Morgan. That should give the team a little bit more confidence. Laker to Ferry. Ferry has the ball knocked away and out of bounds by Morgan, who's charging up the crowd. And his teammates. You look at Duke's pattern here on offense. Danny Ferry showing his versatility. One minute he's outside dropping a 15-footer. The next minute he's inside making the score. Here he gets great position on Daniel. Morgan is four for six. But I believe Richard... Nope, that's not he that has drawn the foul. Instead it is Bill Batts. The 16 foul. So the next one is the bonus. Barry will inbound the ball to Jim Snyder. And there's a big man underneath, and he's walking as Leitner just could not control that. Now, despite the turnover, though, Duke has recognized Virginia's man-to-man -man offense, and they're exploiting the fronting that's going on inside, bringing most of their people from the weak side up and trying to drop in a little loud. Duke has had twice as many turnovers as has Virginia, six to three. Getting it inside. That's Bats, and all over him is Leitner, and he's going to be called with yet another foul. And that was kind of an unnecessary foul, and quickly, Abdelnabi is up. But you got to remember, Christian Leighton is a freshman. He went out in good position. However, he reached for the ball. Bill Bats had really no place to go with it, and Leighton did. Uh, commits a foolish foul, but it's part of the learning process. Well, you can see there are three fouls, and he is a man that could be missed. Making the seat. Body will run things. Virginia with an opportunity to tie the game with 12.25 to go. Daniel Ferry right on him. Here's Morgan. Shooting. No good. And look at this. <laughs> Morgan. Morgan attempts to get his own his own rebound after that shot. 
It may have been an ill-advised shot. Here, Morgan takes a driving, running one-hand, and that's the type of shot that Coach Dave Odom wants to see. And then he compounds the mistake by coming underneath Quinn Snyder. Again, Richard Morgan is the leader on this team. He's got to be a little more selective in his shooting. I know he wants to get the team off really well here with 12 minutes and 17 seconds, maybe possibly tie this game up, but he's got to be selective. Jeff Daniel comes in, or rather goes out, and Matt Blumberg comes in as Snyder on the one-on-one -on -one now. Remember, they're in the bonus, step to the line. And he's not a great free-throw shooter, barely over 55%, but he makes that one, and it's 19-16. Duke leading. Good there, Turner has the rebound. And he'll be charged, I believe, with Wilson down on the court. Well, he went to the floor, Jim, and that's the travel. Can't control your feet. Fans don't like it, but that's the fact of life. He did not control his feet, and thus it is a traveling violation. Third in down the ball to Tim Snyder. Body on him. There's Ferry. Good pass to Abelnabi for his first basket. Good assist by Ferry, and he's going for that. 21-16. Morgan had Ricky right in his face. Crotty gives him around Ferry. Tries to get it inside, and ball goes out of bounds off Quinn Snyder. Well, Quinn Snyder was caught in a mismatch down low. London had him beat, but Snyder had a presence of mind to slap the ball away. 11.49 left to go. We're just in the first half. Virginia's had a chance to tie at 18, but it's Duke that's out in front by five, 21 to 16. Stay tuned for Hottie Farms Play of the Game Awards, brought to you by Hottie Farms, America's number one brand of chicken. 21-16, Duke leads 11.49 to go. We're at University Hall in Charlottesville, Virginia, and the inbound to Blundman. And Crotty will set things up in that court. Virginia's a little more patient on offense right now. They recognize they are getting some mismatches inside. They've got to exploit them. From the side, there is Bryant Stiff. Now with four points. And it's 21 18. There's Smith, a good six man. Bill Henderson still on the bench. Barry has seven points, including a three-pointer, and there is Snyder missing, and that's Bill Batts going up to get the rebound. Out of you, but almost over the head of Turner. Good play by Turner. Stiff will bring it back out. Smart play by the freshman. Stiff recognized he was in over his head underneath. Pass it back outside. Stiff missing. London. Whoops. Almost got it away from Stiff, and then he does another smart thing by getting the ball out to Crotty. And this is the type of play we expected to see from Virginia all along. Got there. Oh, that. And who would have thought it would have went up? But it's 21 20. But you've got to take it. Bill Batts turned, saw he was open, said, why not? Duke has missed only one field goal attempt. And that's the second as Perry misses. And down with it is Kenny Turner. And Friday brings it up court. All right, this is one of the intangibles we spoke about. Durant Holland, there's a third traveling violation against Virginia. And that hurt, Jim, because I was going to say, they're at home. Virginia has now gotten the crowd back into the game. They've gained some momentum. They can't afford those types of turnovers. This has to be almost a perfect game for the Cavaliers. Anderson with six points has the ball back in the ball game. pass there by Smith and almost picked off. Now with Henderson in the game at the point, this is one of the question marks that Duke has faced all year. They really don't have a quality point guard, pure point guard to back up Quinn Snyder when he has to take the rest. Bill Henderson has to take on the uh, responsibility of leading this team and keeping their composure here on the road. Morgan, a lot of people thought he was carrying the ball. Henderson misses. And there's Morgan getting the ball, and then Stiff picks it up from him. Morgan back in the ball game. Turner went out. 
Now Virginia has a chance to go ahead with 9.50 left in the first half. In underneath, going up for the shot. Shot was taken by Dabbs. It is no good. No foul. The crowd wants an offensive, or I'm sorry, a defensive goaltending call, but the ball did not have an opportunity to go in. Good no call. Abdonabe misses, and there's a block call on the man on the floor, and that is Dabbs, and that is his third by my count. Well, that time, Brent Dabbs did not have good position on the floor. Made a little contact with Abdonabe, who shot the nice little one-handed hook. That is his third. And remember, both times that Duke has been fouled recently, they will go to the line because they are in the bonus. And here's Abdonabe, who has two points. Another one of those 6'10 men. Ferry is 6'10. Leitner, who has 3,000, is 6'10. Buckley, who hasn't played yet, is 6'10. George Bergen on the bench is seven feet tall. That is a big ball club. Well, they've certainly got some trees, and Abdelnabi this year has shown a promise that's been expected of him over the last couple of years. He's been a steady influence on the street. And he weighs 240. He's not a tall, slender man. 23-20. That's Morgan with Henderson right with him. From the side, no good. And a whistle underneath there. Good job by Phil Henderson changing Brian Stiff's shot. As he matures, Brian Stiff will realize that once you start in your motion, you might as well take the shot. You we'll see here a good entry pass to the corner here. Stiff is set up well, but there's Henderson. Steps out real quick and makes Stiff change the shot. Well, here they are again. This time it is Greg Kubek who just came into the ball game. Was fouled by Bats, his second foul. And Kubek is an outstanding free throw shooter. Nope. And down with it is Bumble. Still 23-20. And again, a missed scribble of the ball. And yet another turnover. Well, I'll tell you right now, what Duke is doing is once John Crotty gives up the ball, Quinn Snyder is sticking to him like glue, not allowing him to get it back. Consequently, guys who are not accustomed to handling the ball outside are using maybe their, their fourth sense but making a mistake. We're back on the side, shooting over Steph. And that's something that Mike Krzyzewski has wanted all year, a good perimeter game, and Greg Kubek has been expected to provide that. Well, there's a fourth turnover, the last six possessions for Virginia. Six times they've had the ball, four of the six times they've turned it over. Very good cross court to Kubek. He takes the shot. So good, and now Bernardi goes up, and it is knocked away. He's going to get it. It will be Skip and Morgan. It loses London. Morgan tips it up and in. Good ball movement by Virginia. Forces that weak side help to step up when there's a man that's open. And Morgan sneaks in again on the weak side. 11 points for the senior, Richard Morgan. 25, 22. Barry on a nice pass to Henderson. There's another assist for the big man. And that's why he's been labeled the best pass in college basketball. Recognize that he not only did not have the shot, but two men on him and dished it off nicely. Anderson has eight points and a foul, and now, for the first time, Virginia will take advantage of the one and one. Anderson is second foul. Body is calling for time. They started to walk off. Now they walk back. Anderson and Abenami go out. Snyder is in. Trubeck is in. Smith is back in. Ricky is in. Now with Henderson out, with Henderson out, watch Quinn Snyder. He's going to feel an awful lot of pressure here because there's no other true ball handler except maybe for Danny Ferry out there. Morgan is five for seven on field goals, 11 points, and has 12 points, and he'll get another shot. It's 27 for Duke. One shot. 23 for Virginia. Virginia is hanging tough. 
7.40 to go. 27-24, Duke. And now, a word from our good friends at Budweiser. Collinsville, Virginia, where Duke has a three-point lead over Virginia, 27 to 24. The announcer of the game, approved and selected by Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, unauthorized duplication or reception of this broadcast without the express written permission of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. And through all that, you can see Duke take a shot and miss it. And now, right back at the other end, a miss. Well, on the last trip down, Virginia was in a 1-3-1. Oh, yeah. And this time, Duke beats that press down court. But as I mentioned, with one true ball handler in the game, Virginia's going to resort to some type of pressure. Make the other guys handle the ball and see what they can do. And he turned missed, and John Smith did not. Again, the five-point lead, and that there's a turnover, but turn it back the other way. As Bricky got the ball, he dribbled the ball on the sideline, and it goes back to Virginia. A break there for the Cavaliers. Well, Bricky showed good quickness that time. He's exhibiting at times the type of defensive talent that Billy King showed for Duke in uh, years past, and that's what Duke will really look at that. And Martin had quick hands there. Crotty almost lost the ball. There's Turner. Crotty goes in, no good. Battle for it underneath, and... A foul is on the man on the floor, and that is Greg Kubek. That's his first. Well, Duke's definitely not getting away cleanly with the defensive board. Virginia's battling them at every turn, and it's something that maybe at halftime Mike Krzyzewski's going to discuss here, because that's one of the reasons why Virginia's in this game. They've gotten a number of second shots. Curtis Williams in, and Anthony Oliver in for Virginia, and this is Bats at the free throw line. It's one and one, 6.34 to go. First half. Max now has three points. It's 29 25. Dave Odom filling in for Terry Holland, recuperating from surgery. And we would assume watching tonight. Get that one. Barry's got the rebound. Four point lead. Virginia's back quickly in the uh Oh, there's your the double dribble. Snyder is guilty this time. And that's the result of changing defenses. Quinn Snyder, who's normally a savvy and experienced point guard, that time could not decide what was going on. Again, when you're caught in the middle of thoughts, that's when a player starts to make mistakes. Roddy takes a seat. And back in is Morgan. Williams has lost the ball away. Curtis Williams simply lost the ball. He's one of the two junior college All-Americans they have on this team this year who have transferred. The other is Dad. Smith. Oliver knocks the ball away, but good hustle by Perry. Ball goes out of bounds, however, but Danny Perry really hustled after that ball. But Danny Ferry also had to contend with two Virginia players. Bill Batts blocking the lane down the middle, and then Oliver coming along to slap the ball away. That's what he's going to see for the most for the rest of the night. Duke by four, less than six minutes to go in the first half. Morgan inside, good move there by Williams in and out, and the ball goes off the hands of. Let's see. I thought it might have gone off of Batts, but they say nope, it still belongs to the Cavaliers. Tough break for Virginia. Williams did have. The open shot kind of rimmed the basket, but that was still a good look by Richard Morgan. Richard Morgan is playing under control right now, and he is the leader of this team. Smith and Kubek go out, and Alfred Donabe and Henderson come in. This is Oliver. Oliver remembers a freshman. That's Martin on him. Got hands everywhere around Oliver. He may get rid of the ball and does not before he walks. Freshman got caught in no man's land. Ryan Stitt comes back in, and Dave Odom is doing again what Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski said, they'll keep running people in at you. Right now, the Cavaliers are sticking with Duke, but they're down by four. Duke, number one in the country, 10 games without a loss. Tough week this week, Seattle, Washington on Tuesday, overnight flight. 
Played at home on Thursday. Ferry takes the shot. Yes. Now, Virginia came out that time in a straight man-to-man. -man. Danny Ferry came off a pick down low, and he came off wide open. He could have taken all day for that shot. Ferry is four for five. One of those is a three-pointer. Has nine points. Morgan takes the shot. Yes. And that's a three-pointer. Here's first. Well, he's got Phil Henderson on him. Henderson can't afford another foul at this moment. Morgan recognizes that, and he may have his way for the rest of this half if Henderson stays on him. Richard Morgan has 16 points. His average is 17 per game. Stiff is giving Bricky the outside shot, sagging inside. Now they charge, I believe, on Abdelnabi. Yes, it was. Abdelnabi. And Abdelnabi was fighting for position down low, trying to get into a position where the defender is fronting him, and he can look for the live pass. At that time, he used his arms and was caught. Well, Crotty has come in, and Oliver's gone out. And here comes Jeff Daniel for Virginia, and it'll be Bats who goes out. Williams stays in. Stith is in. Morgan is in. And Williams will be the man at the line. He has no points. But at the free throw line thus far this season, Curtis Williams has hit on 16 of 19 attempts. He could bring Virginia within one should he make both. Nope, not to be, but there. Battle for it. Jump ball. And control possession goes to Duke. London coming back in, and Williams goes up. But again, Jim, that's good hustle by the Virginia Cavaliers. That may be at least their eighth offensive rebound of the night, and that's one of the things that's keeping them in the game, the second shot. 31-28, four and a half minutes left. First half. Barry London shoots over London. Yes, Barry keeps hitting. He now has 11 points, all from the floor. He's missed only once. Five-point lead, Duke. Good pattern basketball by Virginia. That'll be short, but a whistle blows, and there's a foul. Let Elmo and I were talking. You know you're getting a little long of tooth when you can see that Clay Buckley is on the Duke team and his father, Jay Buckley, played for Duke and John Crotty is on the Virginia team and his father, John Crotty, played for North Carolina. And we remember them all. But I was a little kid. No. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan having a great night at the line. Hasn't missed from there yet. Richard Morgan is a great talent, particularly from the outside. He's the type of player that has to be constantly reminded to play within himself. Don't try to do too much. When he does that, he's usually on the money. And again, as the senior on this team, he has got to lead by example, and he's the one that helps the team keep their composure. for Richard Morgan, 33 to 30 to score, four minutes left in the half. Body is going out, Oliver's coming back in. Virginia's setting up for some full court pressure at the moment right now, and they have changed defenses an awful lot, keeping Duke off balance. Oh, Curry makes a rare bad pass. And Morgan takes the shot. That's a two-pointer. Once again, Richard Morgan under control, pulls up. Takes what the defense gives him. One point ball game. Here's Snyder. And he throws the ball right to Oliver. Lead pass to Morgan. There's a foul. And Morgan is fouled by Bricky. And as he charged up. Now here's about the time when all the travel, the three games, in five days, the 3,000 miles from Seattle back to Durham, this is when it'll take its toll, right about the halftime. Virginia's changed defenses on Duke. They've worn them down. Now they're applying full court pressure, and Duke seems to be a bit flat or even mentally fatigued. 
Not an easy bus ride up here, and with the weather conditions as they are, they'll climb on a bus and take another four-hour trip after tonight. They got to play this game first. It is a tie ball game at 33. And if he makes this, since the first basket of the game, Virginia will have the lead for only the second time. Virginia has the lead. 34, 33. 332 to go. It's 34, 33. And University Hall has gone happily bananas. 34, 33. Virginia leads Duke. They've scored the last six consecutive points. But here you see Danny Ferry has the ball in good position, but as you say, makes a rare error throwing the ball cross court against the full court press. That was a very lazy pass. Ricky takes the shot, no good. Stiff this time to balance, but John Smith can't hold on to it. So Stiff misses, Smith lets it goes out of bounds. And from Robert Bricky, Virginia will take that shot all day. They'll enjoy that shot because Bricky is not a perimeter threat. He only has three points. London on boy, he fed that thing right to Quinn Martin. That was a bad pass on his part. And Smith, who can hit from there, does not. And Stiff knocks the ball away to Crowley. Again, Stiff having position on Bricky. Stiff is loose, and he's good from there, but not this time. Battle for it, and belongs to Virginia. Duke is having trouble holding on to the ball. Well, both teams a little anxious right now. Each time, it's been one pass and a shot. It's a one-point difference between the two teams. Now's the time to set up, explore the defense a little bit, try to create some situations where you can draw fouls. And I believe Virginia's going to do that now. Let's run the clock down a bit. We have two minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first half. It's 34-33, Virginia leading the number one team in the nation, Duke. Making it close. Well, Blundham took a shot, and it goes in. Well, Blundham saw the opportunity. Danny Ferry sloughed off in just a bit. Had no other choice. Ferry, three-pointer, but no. Goes out of bounds and belongs to Virginia, and Duke is having some trouble. Could it be the 3,000 miles cross country? Could it be the long bus rides of three games in four days, five days? Or is it Virginia? Well, it's a combination of Virginia's changing defenses and their enthusiasm and possibly the fatigue. Danny Ferry would be a prime example. I mean, as fundamentally sound as he is, that time he shot off of his heel. And that's usually the sign of a tired player. And remember his lazy cross-court pass against the press, also a sign of fatigue. Here's Crotty. Turner. London's not going to take that one. Morgan wants to shoot and is going to shoot and no good. And there's Abronabe getting it. And Quinn Martin bringing it up. Quinn's not it. Barry almost made a mistake there. Abronabe has it go off his hands. They still are not catching the ball. A feed to Crotty. Yeah! Great pass by Morgan, but Crotty used the basket very well to shield the defenders with the reverse layup. Virginia's got the momentum. Duke is now looking as though they know they're in a game. Virginia has scored the last 10 points in a row. Bricky shoots. No good. And Virginia's out hustling him on the boards with position. It's airtight inside on the Duke defense, uh, offensive end. They can't get it inside. That's a bad shot by Morgan who follows. But that's no good. And there's a foul called. And it looks like it could be on Virginia's Kenny Turner. That's now, what it is. Out here at half court, John Crotty's maybe giving some words of encouragement to Richard Morgan, and so's Dave Odom, but they're saying, Richard, you're the man. You've got to take better shots. And I think Richard knows it. He's looking back at the bench now, giving the, the okay sign. All right, here's Morgan again. He drives down the baseline, but a running one-hander. He's got defensive help coming outside, and then he compounds the ball. Brian Stiff is inside, and he compounds the foul by foul. 
look at this. A chance to break the 10 to nothing run by Virginia. Kubek has missed his second straight free throw. He came in shooting at 76% from the line. And Virginia with a five-point lead comes back down court with just about one minute left in the first half. And that ball is thrown away and out of bounds. London thought that maybe Kubek touched it, but he did not. Well, that was a bad angle for that type of pass. you got to dribble in the position before you can make that angle pass. To throw it across court like that is just giving it into the willing hands of the defense. Ben Martin. Snyder. Or Tubby. Duke is having to. There's Perry. And yes. When he's needed, Danny Perry is there. That's 13 points for Danny Perry, and it's 38-35. Perry is six for eight from the floor. Now Virginia should be holding it for one. They can run the clock down. And in nine seconds, the shot clock is off. Snyder on Oliver, who feeds to Plumden. No good. And now Bernabe comes down with it. And now Duke with 15 seconds right now on the clock. I wonder if Virginia was aware that the shot clock was off. They had all the time left. Yet they took a shot and gives Duke enough time to come back. Very good. Way outside. No good. And Kubek goes down as the ball goes out of bounds. And they say it still belongs to Duke with two seconds to go. Virginia leading by three in the half. And that shot makes you wonder if either team is aware of the clock. Danny Perry takes a 25-footer. Snyder falls from the sidelines. It is no good. And after trailing by five, six, and seven much of the first half, as they leave the floor, Virginia's on top of the number one ranked team in the country by three. 38 to 35, led by the 22 points of Richard Morgan and the hustle of the entire Virginia team and perhaps the fatigue of Duke University. Cavaliers 38, Duke 35, we're at University Hall. It is a sellout despite the fact that the students are not yet back on campus. But when you get the number one team in the nation coming in, and a team that has beat Virginia 12 times in a row, five times here, everybody shows up and wants to be in, perhaps, for the one time that Duke's successes are not repeated. So, halftime coming up. And it's been an exciting first half, a lot of hustle. And we look forward to the second half, but first of all, we pay attention to the halftime. At half, Virginia leads by three. The first half of this ACC game on the Ray And the shooting, Duke, as we knew, 13 for 27. Virginia, seven more shots and only one more basket. Well, I'll tell you what's happening. Duke is getting their share of shots. They're shooting 48%. Normally, they're averaging 57% from the floor. But if you look at Virginia's total, 34 shots. That's uh, probably a consequence of getting on the offensive board and creating shots, spreading out the Duke defense, getting some open shots. You know, when Richard Morgan, again, is under control, the rest of the guys play well. Uh, Duke, on the other hand, still plays their pattern game. They're not going to go outside of themselves on offense. And I look to see them here in the second half to regain their composure, play their tough defense, and force Virginia into some turnovers here. That's what they need, some early turnovers. The turnovers are even so far. Well, that a lot of people might be saying as they look at the points, hey, they said it's the Piedmont statistics. Well, those who follow such things in business know that U.S. Air recently uh, took over Piedmont Airlines. So, folks, it is all in the family. Fly Piedmont, fly U.S. Air. In any event, they all brought you the, st the statistics here at Aptop. And there's the biggest one right there. Richard Morgan with a 22 of the 38 points that Virginia has. Let's see. It is Snyder, Ricky, Ferry, Henderson, and Abdelnabi who led all clubs and rebounds with five in the first half. Despite the fact he only had four points. And Maryland has lost to Clemson. Maryland's 0-2 in the conference now. That's their fourth loss in a row and fifth in their last six games. And they get Carolina Wednesday night. Good luck. Stint along the baseline. And that is almost a bad pass. But that brings it down. Body driving, and it looks like Snyder reached in on him. That time, 
John Crotty caught Quinn Snyder back on his heels on defense, and John Crotty took advantage of it. And that's been one of the other question marks about this Duke team, ranked number one, is the foot quickness out front at the guard position. Obviously, Tommy Amaker's gone, so is uh, Billy King, and they still need that defensive stopper out front. Snyder with two personal fouls now. This is Blunden. And there's the quick hands of Snyder knocking the ball out of bounds. Crotty is in there. Stiff. Dabs. And of course, Richard Morgan for Virginia as we begin the second half. No score thus far in the first 30 seconds of the second half. Starting out at a much slower pace than they did, Virginia, I'm speaking of, to begin the game. The ball is knocked out of bounds off the knee of Crotty. Well, we mentioned at the top of the half that uh, Virginia has gotten their share of shots. Right now, it seems as though rather than get too prosperous and continue, they're going to play a more of a pattern game, and hopefully it won't work against them. But Duke is still playing a tight defense, and they're going to create the turnover. Very three points to start the second half of 16 altogether, and we got a tie game at 38. And Morgan tries to answer and does. It's a three-point difference again, and Morgan's got 25 points. And there's no better shooter in the ACC when he gets set. That was an obvious foul by Morgan. He did not have his feet planted. He was not in position. Tried to maneuver his way in, and instead has drawn his third personal foul. And here, Richard Morgan, reaching just a bit, tries to get back in position. Does a good job of recovering, but his help comes over just a little too late. London on Ferry at the moment. Ferry looking to shoot and does shoot. And Crotty, whoops, there's a foul here again. And this may be on Albanabi. Well, you've got to give London a lot of credit. He's playing Danny Ferry. He's usually playing him alone out there on the side. And Ferry, one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in college basketball. But London has stayed on his feet. And he's actually made Danny Ferry work for every single shot that he's taken. Albanabi now has three personal fouls on him, as does Leitner. There's Blumman, and that's short. And look at the battle up there by Stiff. That is knocked away, and a foul is called. And is it on Alain Abdelnabi again? If so, that's number four. Loss of concentration by the Duke defense. That's it. Four on Abdelnabi. Here, Blunden has his shot changed by Henderson, who comes flying over. But here comes Stiff, sneaking right down the lane. And again, it's a lack of concentration by the defense. No blocking out here. Stiff had four points in the first half. This is his first trip to the foul line, and he's got two shots. 42 to 38. Virginia leading number one Duke. And Jim, you look at a guy like Ryan Stiff, this has got to be a freshman's dream. He comes out of small high school in uh, Virginia, valedictorian. Here he is, not only starring as a freshman, but playing the number one team on national television and doing well. There's Ricky. Henderson. And that is Leitner, and he is fouled. Obviously, Richard Morgan doesn't agree, but the call is the goes against it. But that's four on Morgan. And here's Henderson. It's a good entry pass inside the Leitner. Dabs gave up too much room inside. Leitner had him on his back. It's really difficult to stop the seven-footer when he's got to on the back three feet away from the basket. Richard Morgan tried to help out. It may not have been the wisest thing to do, considering he is the sole offensive power here for the Virginia Cavaliers. He's got to sit because it's four. Leitner had to take a seat with three fouls in the first half. Was back out there with Abdenabi on the bench with four fouls. Five-point lead, Virginia. And three points for Christian Leitner of Angola, New York. That's up in the Buffalo area, and he is a freshman at 6'10". 43-39, lots of time left, 18-25. You see Quinn Snyder digging in right now, knowing Richard Morgan's out of the game. Here's what he wants to take advantage. London, no, and Stiff, yes! But a freshman shall lead him. Here's Brian Stiff. He's not giving up. He's taking over where Morgan left off. Snyder. And a foul underneath. Ricky's looking around. And they're looking at Kenny Turner. And Turner draws the foul. For Virginia, that's his first. 
That's just a product of good positioning by the offensive player. Kenny Turner again, far behind his man. There's really nothing you can do except give up the points of foul. And that Ricky shoot from there, no good. And he comes out to Crotty. Virginia with its largest lead of the game, six points, has a chance to get up to eight. London. And he's turned it over. Put it on the floor. There's a lack of communication between the two Duke defenders. Consequently, two are on uh, John Crotty. London sneaked down the lane, but he put the ball on the floor, giving Snyder a chance to recover. That's a lost opportunity right there. Anderson gets it in underneath, and there's a shot that is good by Christian Leitner. Leitner shows a good instinct with the ball underneath. Nice drop step on the baseline. 45-41. That ball is in and out, and he's going to try again, and it's not going to go in. And Dad's his foul. And Dad's may have gotten away with a little traveling music right there, but again, the aggressive team will always get advantage of anything that's close. But that's four personal fouls on Christian Leitner now. Two of the big men for Duke are in foul trouble. Dad's over one from the line. Two points only in the game thus far. 45-41. And as you mentioned, Jim, Dabs and Williams are a part of an influx of junior college transfers in the ACC, and a lot of them are having some impact on, on their team's play. That's, uh, it wasn't heard of when I was playing. Late third. In the ball game of the four fouls comes down with a rebound. Both men, as we said, were junior college and all Americans last year. Snyder pulls up. Ball is knocked away, but Leitner comes down with it. Duke trails by five. To look inside, Leitner again is getting good position on Dad. Snyder, three pointer. And for Quinn Snyder, that's his second, third, and fourth points of the game. It's 46 44. And Snyder reaches in and draws a foul. His third. And Duke is really potting up the fouls with Abdelnabi four, Leitner four, Snyder now three. And if Duke is going to stay in this man to man, Quinn Snyder's guarding Brian Stiff, and that's definitely a mismatch inside. On the other end of the court, though, those three points by Snyder couldn't come in a more opportune time. Duke needs that perimeter shooting badly. Snyder out, two back in. London looking for someone to get rid of it and gets rid of it to Ferry. Great defense. And there, bad pass by Ferry. A little lazy there behind the back. No need for that. Very uncharacteristic of the Duke Blue Devil team. Create a turnover and come down and just give it right back. It's happened a number of times tonight. Virginia by two. Remember moments ago, they led by six. Lots of time on the shot clock. Crotty going to take the shot. The left hander good. That's six points for John Crotty. 48-44. We'll watch the clock. 16 minutes and five seconds to go. That's Leitner. Very good around there. And that's where he, get a, he gets a bundle of his points. Well, absolutely, he's going to score in that situation. Again, Brent Dabbs is playing behind him. And with a guy who has the inside savvy as Leitner, he's going to score if he has a player on his back. But he's going to take another shot of three-pointers. This time, no good. Perry with the rebound. Now Duke has a chance to tie after moments ago, trading by six. Leitner's going to try it again, and yes, he has tied it. And Virginia's going to have to call a timeout and make an adjustment here. Dabbs is playing behind the player who is scoring on him at will. It is 48 all. Here again, we see an entry pass from the side, and there's Brent Dabbs right behind Leitner. Leitner with a nice fake to the middle, uses the backboard well. And when a player is that successful inside, there's nothing you can do but front him or give up the two points. Robert Bricky drew a foul on that. It's 48 all with 15 and a half minutes to go. And now a word from our good friends at Natural Light. Picked up his fourth foul. Leitner replaced him, and he scored seven of the ten points on a 10-5 run by Duke. Here's the foul trouble. In a situation like that, though, you'd have to say advantage Duke. They've still got a fresh John Smith. Roddy takes it all the way right by Henderson. 
And that should never happen, and it usually doesn't against a real tight Duke defense. However, this time, Crotty caught everybody asleep. Very late man, and he got another one. And that time, Virginia tried to front. Bill Batts fought his way in front, but Danny Ferry, the great passer that he is, just lifted the loo in the late. Stiff. Foul called. Will that be on Bricky? It's going to be his third. Leitner was well outside. It is on Bricky. Leitner scored the last six points for Duke, and now Aldenabi is coming in, and they're going to take Bricky out. And now you got the Twin Towers in there. Aldenabi, 6'10", make it the Triple Tower, because Ferry remains in at 6'10", and Leitner's in there at 6'10". So take that. Well, in, in a matchup in these situations here, you got two fresh players, uh, Smith and I guess Danny Ferry, who hasn't really had to extend himself on defense because he's been guarding a Bill Bat, who hasn't been very offensive-minded today. Now Aldenabi walked onto the court, and now he is out of there. So let's check it again. Later remains in. Kubek has come in instead. John Smith and Henderson and Quinn Stott. There's Lechner, and he's got another one, and he's fouled. He is just destroying them underneath. Well, he's gotten the help of Danny Ferry, whose eyes are as good as anyone's in this league. That time, Virginia, lack of communication. Ferry gets the ball inside. Now you have three players run to Ferry. There's no one on the weak side. Quite possible the weak side guard at the top could have dropped down, and that was stiff, but he didn't. And consequently, we have maybe a three-point play. Kristen Leitner has been doing the job here. Leitner has 11 points, make it 12 in this half, and the last nine Duke points have all been by Christian Leitner, and now Duke leads by three with 14.40 to go. Body driving the baseline, it's the pass that is picked up, and London, way over, Bats goes up and puts it in. Good position by Bill Bats, he refused to be moved underneath there. Nice power move. Ferry trying to get around Blunden, shooting over Blunden, and Ferry goes to work. Five points in this half, 18 altogether. Three-point lead now, 55-52 for Duke. You can see Blunden was a little tired. He didn't have a hand in Ferry's face on that shot. Ferry has hit eight of his 11 shots. No good there, attempted by Bill Batts, and down with it comes John Smith. Good position, Batts rushed it a bit. Oh, look who's there. Oh, he missed it. And was fouled. Jim, that was the easiest shot he had all night. But again, Christian Leitner, for some reason or another, the uh, Virginia defense is just not paying attention. He's been wide open a number of times right there in the paint. If you give a guy that size, that kind of daylight in the paint, he's going to hurt you. Jeff Daniel replaces Bill Batts. And Leitner gets a well-deserved rest as Abel Nobby comes in for him. Leitner hit it. Well, Duke has hit on seven of his last eight shots until this one. And that is Dundon. Off the hands of Abel Nobby. Cavalier crowd was calling for an over the back against Abel Nobby. Stiff along the baseline, and yes! Now, here's a situation where a lot of coaches in this league differ. Here, Stiff makes a nice move down the baseline after getting the pass from Crotty. Good, quick move down the baseline. Here's Danny Ferris standing under the basket. Stiff goes up and scores, but yet, rather than have a foul call or a no call, he has the offensive foul called against him. There's a bit of disagreement in the NCAA as to whether that call should be made at all. Duke by one. 13-15 to go, almost intercepted by Brian Stiff. Again, a pass way across court. But Stiff almost was able to go up and get it. Now Morgan is coming back in. Dave Odom apparently figures this is the time before things get out of hand. Morgan, remember, has four personal fouls on him, but 25 points. We got to look to Virginia to go to a zone, which is what they've done. Try to protect Richard Morgan. Abelabi, yes. Six points for Allah, and it's 57 54. And that's where the size of the Duke Blue Devils help out against the zone. You can throw right over top, hit some of those towering pines. 
Dottie pulls up, left-hander. No. And there is Danny Ferry over the basket. Deep by three with 12.45 to go. Much better ball game than many people anticipated. Whether it be fatigue, Virginia, or whatever, there's Ferry again missing this time. And two back. And they wanted an over the shoulder there called again, but got none. And it's 59 54. Duke, which trailed by six in this half, now leads by five. And for whatever it's worth on a call like that, or actually no call, Apple now needs to get some credit for keeping that ball alive. I can't understand why the big men keep putting it on the floor for one bounce and then they get themselves in trouble. Daniel, a push off. I believe the foul's on Abdul Nabi and that might be that he's out. all that she wrote for him. Six points. And there goes one of the 6'10 men. Now Leitner is there and he is coming back in. Snyder comes back in to replace Henderson. Leitner, remember, has had that great rush with 10 points in this half, but he too has four personal fouls. Now, in that situation, that was somewhat of an un unnecessary foul. Daniel had given up his dribble, had trouble getting rid of the ball. When he finally did, not being an offensive threat, Abdul Nabi should have just taken his defensive position. Instead, he got into a little pushing match. Daniel gets his first point. This junior from Indianapolis. That's 15 of 18 from the free throw line for him this year. Morgan is going out, and Oliver is coming in in backcourt for Virginia. 59 55. There have been so many upsets this week. You just wonder. And by putting Oliver back in, that affords Virginia the luxury of going back to man to man to start putting more pressure on Quinn Snyder. That's what Crotty's trying to do, and a whistle blow. <laughs> Turnover. Three seconds. 11 57 to go, 59 to 56. When they come back to University Hall, Virginia trailing by three, will have the ball. We're live, University Hall, Charlottesville, Virginia. And with Richard Morgan back on the court, playing Russian roulette for those four personal fouls. But then again, Leitner is not on the court. They have brought in Clay Buckley, another 6'10 man, a sophomore. His number is 45. So the height continues, even though the starters may be on the bench for their top reserves for Duke. It's Crotty, and we have 11.45 to go. Stiff takes that extra little bounce to the ball, but still gets it down, and that's eight points in this half and 12 altogether. And as we spoke at the break, then Stiff is the one that's going to have to take the responsibility of keeping Virginia in this game offensively. Perry takes the shot. No good. And a foul call. The foul is on Blunden. You know, I talk about all of these Duke starters. Tell me when Danny Ferry has had a seat in this game. Well, Danny Ferry is the one guy that they can't afford to do without. And in a game such as this, you know, every minute is precious. And without him, him on the floor, there's a possibility that Duke loses its composure and also its ability to move the ball. Ferry has 18 points. Missed one. This is two. Fatigue. With 28 straight until then, and we go back to the fatigue factor. You never know until they ask him, but there's some sign. London loose and does not get it, and that's Buckley underneath, and a foul by Daniel. London was in good position for that shot, just came up a little bit short. But one encouraging thing for Virginia is that London is now posting up, and he wants the ball. You've got to be more offensive-minded. All five players out there, you can't put the load on Richard Morgan. Also, that puts a lot of pressure on the Duke defense. They just can't sag off and focus on the one guy. It's a one-point lead for Duke, and Buckley at the line. Out of Wayne, Pennsylvania. Yep. 60 to 58. 
Well, Blunden is really muscling after the ball, isn't he? Friday tries to tie it. Does not. There's Blunden again. And a foul is going to be called on Ferry. And as great a player as Danny Ferry is, you know, you have one of those nights previously, just a few moments ago, Danny Ferry missed some free throws. It's been brought to our attention. Those are the first two free throws he's missed as a Duke player in Charlottesville. London at the line, 9 for 12 before tonight. Now he is 1 for 1, 10 for 13, and here comes some more substitutions for Virginia. Stiff takes a seat. Kenny Turner is back in. Morgan is standing along the sidelines like he would like to come in. London can tie the score, but he's got to make the first one, and he does. 60 to 59. Well, again, with Morgan out, it allows Virginia to go back to some pressure type of defense, whether it's half court or full court. You know, Morgan won't be a liability on defense there. Nope. And there is Ricky with the rebound. One point lead. And look out. Come back. Come back. And that fellow of London is really hustling. You got to give the kid credit. He's drawing the toughest defensive assignment that you can possibly draw in this country. And here he is diving off the loose balls. I guess the football coach, George Welch, is also glad to see Blumman. He's a backup quarterback, All-American quarterback in high school, and he's showing a lot of athletic ability tonight. Terry is loose, but there he is hit by Blumman, who picks up his second personal foul in about a minute. Quinn Snyder is coming back in. Let's see who goes out. Leitner standing along the sidelines. He's not yet in. Had that great stretch of 12 points in this half, 14 altogether. Barry, remember, 0 for 2 last time. And this time he silences everybody, and that's 19 points for Barry. But five rebounds. Here comes Morgan back in, and Oliver goes out. Well, we can see Dave Odom's plan right now. He's going to try to keep Richard Morgan off the defensive end as much as possible. He'll shuttle him in every time there's a stop of the ball and change the possession when Virginia comes on offense to take advantage at least of Richard Morgan as a threat, if not a shooter. Three-point lead, 62-59. More than ten and a half minutes to go in the game. And he's not going to shoot it. London, Morgan will, and he is fouled. That's Ricky, and don't look now, but that's four on Ricky. Well, let me tell you, Richard Morgan made the best of a poor situation. That time, Robert Ricky, the great athlete that he is, the great leaper that he is, was too close, much too close to Morgan. Here, Bricky again has to go through a multitude of picks, guarding Richard Morgan very closely. Morgan is on the weak side, receives the ball. Bricky's in good position, but Morgan made the best of that by allowing the contact, taking the contact and falling, even though the shot was blocked. Bricky and Smith go out. Kubek has come back in. And Buckley stays in, and Snyder is in. Anderson. Morgan has not missed from the free throw line tonight. not as clean as some of the others, but he counts the same. That's 62-60. Duke. And 26 points, of course, for Richard Morgan. Hey, you've got to jump that in there. It's a little short. Not a body English, but it just hit the front of the rim. And it's by two, and they've got the basketball. Had Morgan made that shot, Anthony Oliver was poised to come in and change on defense with Richard Morgan. Wow. Tell you, Ferry really hooked Max Blunden around the neck, and that's what the fans were yelling about. Illegal Al Cole underneath. And it's going to be on Buckley, his first. And now... Anthony Oliver's coming in. They'll put Morgan on the bench as Dave Odom continues his strategy of how to use Morgan. London hit two in a row. Missed his last one. And has a chance to tie. But again, at the front end of one and one, must convert to get the second try. 
Nope. And there's Kubek above everybody. 6 6 and jumping like he's taller than that. Emerson Oliver on him. Perry turns around and does not get it. Battle for it. Turner comes down with it. Quadi not slowing it down at all. Oliver takes the shot from the side. No good. Kubek with the rebound. They'll come back the other way. It was a good shot, though, by Anthony Oliver. A little bit short, but that's the kind of shot you have to take against Duke. They're not going to give up much, and if they give a guard a 12-footer, you got to bury it. Abdelnabi is fouled out. Lake was on the sideline for four fouls. Ferry tries to do it, and that is a two-pointer for Ferry. 22 points for Ferry, and a four-point lead for Duke. Oliver takes the shot. It is no good. And coming down with it is Daniel. Again, those offensive rebounds, that's just keeping Virginia in the game. Brody! And it's a blocking call. Quinn Snyder thought he had established good defensive position inside. That's and we see Brody, good crossover, driving down the lane. Ferry comes in, Snyder comes in just a little bit late. Brody had already left his feet. That is not on Snyder, that is on Ferry, number two. So Snyder did not get his fourth. That could have been real deep trouble for Mike Krzyzewski. Curtis Williams is coming in now. He is one of the junior college All-Americans. And Blunden gets a big hand for his hustle as he goes out. 64 to 60, Crotty at the line. First time tonight, 64-61. Well, Blunden's getting a well-deserved rest. You can see on the last shot made by Danny Ferry that Blunden's feet are just a little bit slow right now. He's got to give up the jump shot. Roddy hits both of them. We got a two-point game with 8.55 left. Duke leads it. Duke has beaten Virginia 12 straight times. Favored to make it 13 and 6 in a row here at University Hall. Underneath Henderson. Good move by Henderson drawing the foul. A good pass by Ferry. Henderson does a good job of sneaking on the baseline, getting good position here. And what's important is that as Henderson was continuing with his shot, Williams came over to block it. You know, a lot of people don't look at situations like that, but that prevents a lot of three-point plays if you continue and follow through on the play as a, as a help side. Anthony Oliver draws his first foul. Henderson missed two, made two. I'll make this one his first point of the second half, nine all together, and a three-point lead for the Blue Devils. But free throws for Phil Henderson. Morgan, remember, is back in the ball game, out on the wing to the right, and has the ball now. A feed pass off the hand of Williams, out of bounds. Trying to do just a little too much, Richard Morgan. And also in that offensive set by Virginia, you can see with Danny Ferry playing Daniel, he's getting a rest on defense, which is normally not the place that you get to rest. He said Danny Ferry is the work on offense. You've got to get it somewhere. Ferry takes the shot. No good. Morgan goes up for it. Battle for it. And it was off, I believe, John Smith. And belongs to Virginia. And Dave Orton was worried a little bit with Morgan down the other end of the court. Friday feed to Williams. Yes, sir. A beautiful feed by Friday. And Curtis Williams has his first points of the night. 66-64. the interception. He is the All-American from Allegheny Community College of Transfer. And all you need are a couple of plays to give a team momentum. Williams has provided. <laughs> Stith looks like he wants to shoot down and does not have it. And comes out to Quebec of Duke. Blue Devils by 2, 7, 23 to go. 66, 64. Stiff came within a hair of putting two hands on that ball and getting a double dribble call. 
Snyder takes a three-point cry. Yes. His second three-pointer. He's got seven points. A five-point lead now by Duke. Morgan on the fall away. 28 points for Richard Morgan, 69-66. That is his career high. Yeah. 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 Somebody should cover him up, but does not. Daniel goes for it. Comes down, and Virginia gets the fast break going. Funny. Takes the shot. No, it'll be way short. And right to Ferry, who is fouled by Williams. Well, I was going to mention it. There's good defense by Virginia. However, what winds up happening, as always, somebody gets open. London coming back in for Virginia. Bricky with four personal fouls coming back in for Duke. Dubek goes out. Ferry will be at the line. Danny is two for four from there thus far. And with the good defense by Virginia, they're playing it for about 20 seconds, but again, with about five seconds left. Somebody's getting open for Duke. They got to extend that defense and then have more stamina defensively to keep people from floating in and out of the lane. Well, with his 23 points, also has seven rebounds. And it's a five-point lead again. 6:28 to go. Duke 71, Virginia 66. And now a word from our good friends at Natural Light. Slap basket. Uh, set a new career high for him. And here he gets the ball on the baseline. Nice turnaround jump shot. And again, this is where he's at his best. When he gets the ball, he's set. He knows what he's doing with it. He doesn't have to freelance. He doesn't have to play out of control. You can get him thinking like that, get him in a position to score like that. The guy can bury the jump shot all night. Lock is winding down. Less than six and a half minutes. Virginia's got to make him count now. They're down by five possessions. And what they do with them become increasingly important. Good patience by Virginia. They know that they need the shot right here. They're going to move the ball to try to get it to the hot hand or to get someone underneath for a layup. Stiff underneath the London, and he doesn't get it. He tips it in. That's an excellent play by the freshman Stiff. Again, good penetration and a wraparound bounce pass. That shows that he's aware of where everybody is on the floor. 71-68. Duke showing patience now. Jim Snyder setting up things from backcourt. Williams will give Ricky that shot. Ricky's looking to pass it. There's Leitner. And is he fouled? Yes, I believe he is by Stiff. We'll get the number in a moment. That's who it is. Brian Stiff. Leitner, remember, he had eight of ten points. That Duke scored, and he has 12 in the second half and 14 altogether. The so Leighton is a big enough guy that if he camps out underneath the basket and moves around, something's going to happen, and usually it's something good, and it's been the case so far. Not only is he 6'10", 225, but he is a very strong young man. And a freshman. He's got good footwork, too. You've seen him make a couple of moves with drop steps along the baseline. Look at Perry. Look at Perry. And he is fouled. Danny Perry made that happen. 72-68. Those are the things that aren't taught. And what Danny Perry just did is something that can't be taught. It's a great second and third effort by Danny Perry. Foul was on Curtis Williams, but Perry will go to the line. Perry has 24 points, 11 of those in this half, and eight rebounds. And he's not missing now after those two missed shots earlier in this half. And one thing can be said to Dan Perry's points, he certainly has had to work on The defenders have been staying on their feet, and Perry's been using pump fakes, but he's still been successful. Five-point lead again with 5.28 to go. Duke leads. At one point in this half, they were down by six. They trailed by three at the half. If you don't become number one in the nation, by happenstance, 
Let's keep an eye on Richard Morgan and Quinn Snyder. Snyder sticking to him like glue. Morgan's getting a little frustrated here. Snyder using his hands a bit. Morgan wants to score. You can see it in his eyes. Body steps around. Morgan's got an opening. He's going to take it in and out. That was a three-point try. Snyder with a rebound. And Richard Morgan kind of threw that one up there. It wasn't his normal jump shot. He didn't have the right rotation on that. He's a little bit anxious. Block all in the favor of the Blue Devils. It's coming up in Fort Athens. Late there on a good feed to Bricky. He misses. Bricky's got it again. No good. And there's a foul underneath. And they're pointing at Late there. And he may be out of there. Tough call. Leitner was there, but so was Brian Stitt. Here we see fight under the basket. Bricky gets the rebound, goes up strong on the opposite end. And there's Leitner. Here's, actually, it wasn't Stitt, it was Blunden. Leitner had to move around. A lot of contact underneath on both ends. Of the 15 points, 13 were in the second half. And in a run of 10 straight Duke points, he had eight of them. And he fouls out 73 68 and 426 to go. Well, if Duke pulls this one out, I know where one of the game balls will reside. Christian Leitner gave him a big lift. Nine rebounds for Blunden, who is at the line. He is already well over his scoring average of 4.7 per ball game and his rebound average of 3.9. Short, miss some big ones. It's a four-point game with four minutes and 21 seconds to go. But two big men are out of there. Henderson puts it up, and it is no good, and a whistle blows. At that time, Henderson saw a little bit of an opening. He's a slim, quick, blade-like driver. Cut through two men and was consequently hit and fouled. By Stiff. Anderson has hit his last four free throws in a row after missing his first two. He has ten points. And that's characteristic of this opportunistic motion offense that Duke has. They're not content with just passing the ball around. If they see an opening, they're going to take it. They're going to put as much pressure on the defense as they possibly can. Something they hadn't been doing earlier in the game, but now they've reverted back to their old ways. I think they've got the confidence again. And it's a six-point lead with 4-10 to go. Or do. That's Morgan. Virginia's getting no movement on the weak side. Can't get anybody open. 22 seconds on the shot clock. But they were giving a count to Quaddy who just stood there. Now Dab tries to do something with it and almost throws it over the head of Morgan. Dabbs takes a long shot. No, no chance, but Blunden is there. And Matt Blunden, becoming a favorite, makes it a four-point game again, 75-71. That shot by Dabbs is like a perfect example of the fact that no one from Virginia is working to get open. He's caught with the ball 25 feet from the basket. Goes up and no good. And the whistle blows. Well, that's a luxury that Danny Ferry has with a Robert Bricky on the other side. Seeing that Bricky is there behind the defense, he can just lob that ball up, knowing that Bricky will climb the ladder and go get it. Bricky has been to the line one time. He only has three points all in the first half. The foul there is on Dabs, and that is his fourth. 3.07 to go, 75 to 71. And when we come back, Dukes, Robert Bricky will be at the line. Looking for its 11th win in a row, its second without a loss in the ACC. And for Virginia, this is its first ACC conference game. Virginia has definitely got a move again on offense here. They're trying to get some movement, running a pattern. Good rotation here. Duke staying right with them. 
got John Smith guarding Richard Morgan out on the floor. It should be a mismatch, but Smith gets down. Now they switch. Underneath, and there is Smith. Good pass by Crotty, and it's a four-point game with 2.23 to go. Good patience right by Virginia. They forced the defense to extend itself, switch, and then they found the open man underneath. Duke is going into a semi-delay here. They're going to try to cut this game in half with about two minutes left right now. They're going to run some time off the clock. Look for Ferry inside. Try to draw the foul. All they need to do is to continue to score. Out, but it still belongs to Duke. Louisville barely got by Virginia, 74 to 71. Mississippi State, 86 to 84. Seton Hall beat them by 17. 77-73, Duke. Time on the clock, one minute and 50 seconds. 77-73. Duke's Danny Perry stays in there. Duke's next game is at home against William and Mary. That's not till Wednesday. They'll have a chance to slow down a little bit. Body almost took the ball away from Snyder. Lead into Ferry, but knocked out of bounds by the hustling Matt Blunden. Blue Devils looking naturally to warrant some time off that clock. Before taking the shot, they're up by four. That's Dave Odom looking on. Putting in. Oh, Henderson's going to take a three-pointer. And makes it. And that's a big shot there. Seven points in this half, 15 all together. And it's a seven-point game with one and a half minutes to go. That was a big play by Henderson. London back to Morgan. He needs a three-pointer. And goes! 31 points for Henderson. Or for Morgan, rather. <laughs> 80 to 75. They trade three-pointers. Morgan has 31 points. That time, both of those shots, albeit three-pointers, came out of both teams' offenses. Bill Henderson got the ball in good shape at the top, wide open, and got into his rhythm. Here... See Blunden passing it back outside, avoiding the sloughing of uh, Phil Henderson, and Richard Morgan buries it. Again, Morgan was set, ready to shoot, and he's the best if he can get that done. Forgive me, I said 80 to 75, glancing at the scoreboard. They didn't realize at the score table that was a three-pointer. It is 80 to 76. Now that could be a big difference. Four points difference with 125 to go. Duke will have the basketball. Well, Virginia's in good shape with three timeouts. Duke is also in pretty good shape, considering they have the lead. But Virginia, what they're going to have to do now is maybe put some pressure on Duke, but not foul right away. They're going to allow some time to come off the clock, but force Duke possibly to create some turnovers here by putting some full-court pressure on him. If you get it over half court, you see the clock running down about 20 seconds, you may have to foul the weakest free throw shooter. Two of Duke's men, Abdelnabi and Leitner, have fouled out. Morgan has been playing since early in the second half with four personal fouls. I mean, he played as a spot player, but he's got 31 points. If anyone's going to be fouled, it's going to be Robert Bricky, but right now Virginia's content in playing man-to-man, -man, possibly creating a turnover. Still too early to use off the foul. Barry, and there's a push-off there, I believe, on London. That's what it is. Fans didn't like it, but it seemed rather obvious as he was almost right in front of us. Well, in a situation like this, when you're down four points, it shows the uh, massive passing ability of Danny Ferry. It really intimidates Virginia. People are afraid to leave their man to go and help out. Consequently, London is caught one-on-one -on -one with Ferry, who's got the ball, and you might as well put him on the line in a situation like that if he doesn't score. Ferry has 25 points. Eight rebounds, 26 points. And has played every single minute. Hasn't been off the floor once. And there's nobody else on the team that can say that. 82-76, less than a minute to go. Virginia needs a couple of three corners with some very quick baskets. London has to take it back outside. Stiff, trying to get around Bricky, didn't me short. Go and there's a miss there, and possession will go to Duke. Well, tough shot, tough miss inside. 
And the um, crowd thought there was a foul on Daniel inside, but again, jump ball. Oliver comes in and Crotty will go. Well, let's see, it's Morgan going. Up. Six point lead again. Virginia has played someone tough, but again, apparently, Duke is going to remain number one undefeated. And when they're 13th in a row over Virginia, and they're sixth in a row here at University Hall. Now Virginia can't afford to sit back. They've got a foul. Every man they want a foul. And Daniel didn't take advantage of it. Ball almost lost out of bounds. And finally the foul. Missed opportunity a few seconds wasted. Ricky had the ball in the lane. It was a good time to foul. Jeff Daniel is second foul, but it's 26 seconds to go and a six-point game. Fans are beginning to believe this one belongs to Duke. They will be 11-0, 2-0 in the conference. Virginia will be 0-1 in the conference, 7-5, 7-2 here. But again, that long losing streak to Duke will go to the Magic 13, apparently. Ricky does get it. A 55% free throw shooter has now hit four in a row from the line. Sometimes, you know, these percentages don't mean anything. It's a lay your percentage in the last two minutes when the game's on the line that counts. Daniel has the rebound, but only 24 seconds remain. Seven-point game. That's to get a shot away, and Morgan has it. He better launch something. Oh, Henderson with the rebound, and now Daniel tries to keep it in, and there's a foul there on Blumman, backing into Bricky with 11 seconds to go. Well, it's been quite a night, men or more, here at University Hall, and for a while, Virginia with a six-point lead early in this half. Thought that it might happen with when Morgan got the four points, or the four personal fouls, that just about to get negated any opportunity they might have had of taking Duke. Well, you got to give Virginia an awful lot of credit, but you got to remember they're playing the number one team in the country, and while people knock the Duke schedule, stating that uh, they haven't played anyone in the top 20 so far, this was a good character builder for Duke as well. They regained their poise in the second half. They ran their offense much better. They shored up the defense and cut down on the offensive rebounds. And of course, Danny Perry took over when he had to. And at times, Duke looked fatigued, but they got their second win. Looked very good. Leading by eight. Body slips. Morgan launches. And out. Stiff. That's it. It's all over. And Virginia has been beat for the 13th consecutive time by Duke. Six times in a row here, 84-76. The second half of this ACC game on the Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports Network has been... The Farms players of the game. There goes one of them, Danny Ferry. He had 27 points and played every single minute of the game. And then Richard Morgan, a career-high 31 points and five rebounds. Our congratulations to both men. Our congratulations to both teams. That are more, they gave us quite an evening of good basketball and exciting basketball. Well, I'll tell you, you've, saw, you've seen two excellent players in the ACC come and play their hearts out. And we know Virginia is going to somehow be a factor in the ACC right now. They should get a lot of confidence from this game as well. Duke will remain number one. They're now 11-0 and 2-0 in the conference. And Virginia falls to 7-5. Jim Simpson, Len Omar, goodbye.